In this video, I want to talk about coordinate systems. Particularly, I want to talk about a three-dimensional coordinate system that we will use through most of this course. But our very first intuition about coordinate systems came from a number line. That if I know where zero is, I can express any other location on the number line simply with one piece of information that I could call x. I say a number and we know exactly where it falls on this number line. Well, this is one set of real numbers, so we could in fact call this R1. That's our symbol for the real numbers that you've likely seen before. It's a double barred R. And in one dimension, we have a number line and we simply need one piece of information to locate a value. In a lot of math classes and a lot of algebra classes, you have plotted things or considered equations in the plane. An x-axis that's a real number line and a y-axis that's also a real number line. Now I would need two pieces of information to locate a point in the plane, and we'd call this R2. So now if I wanted to consider an object in space, which is nice because we actually exist in space. In fact, between the board and the camera, there's all this information, right, all these points. And so the coordinate system that would describe what I'm actually filming here would be space. I'm not just writing on the board. That would be an example of R2, right? I have all of this space in between that I can move my hands. And so that's really what we would call space. And we need three pieces of information. We'll need an X, a Y, and a Z. In this class, we will always use what we call a right-handed coordinate system to describe space. And what that means is I have an x-axis, a y-axis, and a z-axis, and that if I was to try to grab the z-axis with my hand, placing my thumb pointing upwards on the z-axis and curling my fingers around the z-axis, my fingers would curl from x to y. And so maybe that would be easier to see in space. So let's let the x-axis be represented by this purple marker. The y-axis be represented with this blue marker. And the z-axis can be represented by this red marker. So I can hold the x-axis and the y-axis exactly as I've drawn them there. And my z-axis should be formed by curling my fingers from the purple marker to the blue marker, from x to y. And there I'd see the z-axis coming straight up towards the camera, and that's a right-handed coordinate system. What that lets me do is I could imagine this coordinate system being turned, and so the red marker is still the z-axis, the purple marker is still the x-axis, and the z-axis is still formed, or the positive z-axis is formed by uh, curling my fingers from the x to the y a right-handed coordinate system. Okay, so let's plot a point in space. Let's imagine plotting the point five comma three comma one. Okay, well, if I was in the plane and just asked to plot x comma y, right, that'd be easy, but here, Whatever point I'm getting ready to plot should have an x-coordinate, a y-coordinate, and a z-coordinate. And so let's think about where that point should be. But maybe at first we can do it intuitively. So let's let this grid that's drawn on this board be the x-y plane. The positive z-axis would be formed by curling my fingers from the x to the y. And so the z-axis would come straight out of the board towards the camera. So let's point, plot the point 5, 3, 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up 3, 1, 2, 3, and then towards the camera 1 unit, which would be right about there. So I'd plot a point right there. It's 1 unit above the board, and that's a little bit hard to see on the camera. So let's see if I can draw it a different way rather than just trying to hold my finger one unit above the xy plane. And so I'll draw as best I can where this point is. And 
The trick is to remember that as I counted out five units and up three units, right, when I count out, I need to be parallel to the x-axis, no matter where that is. When I go up, I need to be parallel to the y-axis, wherever that is. And I guess if I was to imagine going straight up, I'm parallel to the z-axis. That This is a whole lot of parallelism happening to plot this point. So x is five gets me to here, but now I need to go, excuse me, I need to go out three units parallel to the y-axis. So I'm just gonna draw some parallel lines here, right? Parallel to y, parallel to x, thinking about what this rectangle would look like kind of in a perspective. And now I need to find what one unit above looks like. Well, I could travel one unit above, right? Trying to imagine drawing that rectangle exactly one unit above that purple rectangle. And just continuing on thinking about things being parallel to each other. I can draw this in perspective. And the point five, three, one would be right there. So that's a good way to plot points in space, just thinking about drawing parallel lines. And I challenge you to draw that in perspective. Um, I'm not much of an artist, but that still looks like five, three, one to me. Okay, so three space, when we think about it, we'll deal with a right-handed coordinate system. Let's think about that coordinate grid just a little bit more. If I look at this coordinate system, I see three very important planes. If I take the coordinate axes in pairs, I get what we'll call the coordinate planes. There's the xy plane, which is formed by just looking at the copy of R2 that lies in, or is contained within the x and y axes. The yz plane would be this one, and then the xz plane. Well, for all the points I'd plot in the xy plane, their z values would be zero. So I can describe that plane just by saying z is equal to zero. For the yz plane, I'd say, well, x is equal to zero, right? I'm kind of flat over in that wall. And then the xz plane, I would need to say y is equal to zero. Well, this reminds me of dealing with things in the plane. If I say y equals zero, well, that's the x-axis, right? That's that coordinate axis. If I was to say x equals zero, that would be the y-axis, a coordinate axis. And so by saying z equals zero, x equals zero, y equals zero, I get these coordinate planes. While we're thinking about comparing things to the plane, when we're talking about points in R2, we think about them being divided into four quadrants. The first, second, third, and fourth. Well, if I think about these points in space, there would actually be one, two, three, four, and then below five, six, seven, eight octants, right? I'd have space above and below if I think about that Z axis coming straight up at you, right? I'd have four regions above the quadrants and then four corresponding regions below the quadrants in the XY plane. And so you might think we need some way of numbering them, but the truth is only one of them gets a name. Only what we call the first octant gets a name. And the first octant is the region where X, Y, and Z are all positive. Or zero, we'll include the coordinate planes here. And so this region kind of towards where I'm standing while I'm filming this is the first octant. And so if I think about my axes actually in space, right, the things over here, this is my first octant. Okay, so that's how we think about points in space. In the next video, we're gonna look at some equations and inequalities and think about points in space.